Go. Yes, sir. You got, you got your camera ready? Yeah, I'm trying to get the I want to know about Miles and Dave. Actually, get the uh, angle on uh, to, to this week, uh, the decision uh, to uh, part ways with uh, Marlon yesterday. I thought it was like with all our roster decisions, D Lad, uh, very thankful for all the guys that you had the opportunity to coach and, and work with. And um, it's the way it goes in, in this business sometimes when you're trying to make decisions on the best interest of the team. So, uh, very appreciative of Marlon and uh, enjoyed working with them and wish them the best of luck. That's usually the way it goes. It's always done in the best interest of the team and uh, done with in the right way. And what could you share for uh, share with us about the uh, secondary plan as you all have to you know, move, maybe move some folks around or do some things back right there? Well, I mean, just got to see who can go uh, by Sunday. And so we got, like every week, D-led at every position. You got your plans, uh, who you think is going to be up, what you're trying to do game plan wise, and your, your contingency plans. When kind of following on that, do you anticipate AJ will practice today or? He won't be out there today. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, D will be out there. D will be out there. Uh, you mentioned on Monday you weren't sure about any of the IR guys to return. Do you Nobody will be out there today. Okay. Uh, in terms of Carolina, how do you prepare for a guy that has not had a ton of starts in the NFL? Well, I mean, you've got a few games on him. Played a little bit against us last year. Um, you can see, you know, what his strengths are. Uh, he's a good player. He's tough. Uh, I, I like the way he plays. I got a lot of respect for him. Uh, I think he's not afraid to push the ball down the field, um, play, play in the pocket. They can see the belief they have in them. But that's just like anything. If you're preparing for week two or three in the season, you may only have a game, and it's the way it goes. Uh, but they had, they're starting to form an identity. You can see what Steve is trying to emphasize, at least from the outside looking in. And uh, we know it's going to be a tough challenge Sunday when the divisional came here. To that end, uh, even though Coach Wilkes has said that P.J. Walker is the guy, do you still have to prep and plan for guys like Mayfield and Darnold since there are reports that they are trending to be available on Sunday? Well, you always got to know who the backup quarterbacks are. If they play them, I mean, that's that's our job, is everybody that's potentially going to be up, you know, different than, you know, the fifth D lineman they got up who can possibly play inside. I mean, you're aware of all those guys on the roster that's doing your job. Is that it? No, that's not it at all. That's not it. We're just warming up. <laughs> I was to let the grind of the season get you down. It's only week eight. Uh, no, I'm a little slow on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, almost half pretty. And a little more coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's out there. <laughs> yeah, the um, uh, you know, I was just you know, passing game, Pitts and Leonard. You get the questions every week and so forth. Um, how do you, you know? How does that flow? How do you try to get, get them guys going, getting the passing game going, and Marcus, too, to come off of the run game, which has been working great for you guys? Yeah, I mean, there are certain games that we, hadn't ha we have not had to pass that much. I mean, when you, when you have a lead, I mean, those are where stats can be misleading, right? I mean, every game you go in there to have balance, and we have plays, and those, and those guys are a big part of our offense. Um, obviously, the games we've lost, we haven't done a good enough job. And there's always things, even when we've won, that hey, maybe we could have done this a little bit different. And we're looking at that every week. Um, but when you get into some of these four-minute situations, the numbers are going to get skewed. Or you're getting these, some of these games that we've had some pretty quick games, uh, possession-wise. Um, some of it's been good for us, uh, like in Cleveland, and some of it has been not so good, like in Cincinnati, where you don't have a lot of plays. And and uh, but we got to do a better job all around in all three phases. So there's everything D-led. Um, It'll be different week to week, you know, how we try to attack. The ultimate goal is to win, you know, whether we throw it 50 times or we run it 50 times or this guy catches 15 balls or he catches one for a touchdown or a critical third down. The objective is to win, but we're always looking for ways to improve and to get everybody involved. And Foreman, he's a guy that looks like they're leaning on now. He's here. You, you know him well. Yeah. Uh, so he ran well last week. He's a strong uh, runner. Um, I'd say that's why everybody liked him coming out of Texas. Um, Enjoyed working with him. You could see, you know, with McCaffrey gone, you know, he had his opportunity and he made the most of it last week. So I'm sure he'll be ready to go. He's played in some big games. He played in some big games for Tennessee last year and the year before. Uh, so we got to make sure we we're able to, to rally and tackle uh, Foreman, and uh, he'll be ready to roll. I'm sure. When you look at kind of what you were talking about possessions, 
amount of plays of the offense. Is there an ideal amount of plays in your head offensively that you try that you try to kind of get to in a week? No, because there's so many circumstances that can change, right? Um, you know, you block a kick, you know, and you, or you have an interception return for a touchdown. Like, I'll take the touchdown any way we can get. It's not about stats, and that's when I refer to that. It's like, obviously, you want to measure progress. There's different ways to do it, but sometimes on the surface, you just look at those numbers. Well, that doesn't tell the whole story. Um, and so when you when you're able to to steal a possession like that or steal points in a in a different phase in the in the return game, like if Avery returns it 60 yards and then we you know punch it on the offense, uh, that's great. Or you know you get an interception return down to the two and we don't score and uh, like what happened to Stephen Means last year, you just give him a hard time. Like thanks for doing all the work and then we'll punch it in. That's just the way it goes. But you'll take the yards however you can get it. it the, the whole objective is to win and to win as a team and, and to make sure so however it happens. I'm fine with it. I mean, like I said, I think sometimes when you're just chasing certain statistics and you see why it happens, it, it's gotten players and coaches paid before. But you can breed a, a level of selfishness that can screw you over as a team. And that's not the objective. The objective is, is to win and win games. I mean, you see it all over, over and over and over again. There's examples every week, every year in the NFL. And uh, that's the thing you're trying hard to fight in a team uh, kind of mission-oriented profession that can also you know, the great part of this game, the way it gets promoted, there is, you can see where it can, it can lean into some of your ego and your selfishness and, and guys have gotten paid off that, right? So if you're just chasing sacks and um, you can end up screwing the rush plan, you, know, you can jet up the field, lose contain, the quarterback extends drives. Um, you got guys that, you know, they may not have the right route depth because they start pouting, they don't get the ball and they can screw up your spacing. So those are things that behind the scenes you've got to be aware of that's why it's so important to have the right guys and the right perspective and mindset. And the objective is here is to win, and we'll take it any way we can. How do you determine whether, that, whether a guy fits that? Well, you, you just, it's like people. I mean, the more you're, you're around them, you see their habits every day. It's, it's not just when the cameras are in there or when they have their uh, whatever social media thing they want to show the world uh, through their avatar. You know, everybody's all happy and joking around, and then it's like the camera goes off. So day after day, when you're around people, we all know this in different parts of our lives in here, what's real and what's not. So it's just a long, hard evaluation of day-to-day -day and habits. You mentioned, you mentioned Avery. Mm -hmm. How close <coughs> were you to maybe having to put him on defense? On Very close. I thought I was going to put him in there on, on uh, the San Fran game to end it. And I don't know what the uh, – I was joking with Steve Hoffman that maybe if we can look this up. Um, obviously, it's not – hadn't been a – paramount importance to us, but I don't know how many guys would have gone into a game if he had gone in there at corner, which we practiced in the camp. You guys all saw that, right, against Jacksonville. Uh, so he would have been a kick returner, punt returner, PP, covered kicks, uh, played receiver, played running back. If he had to go in there and play DB, it's a pretty valuable roster spot. I don't know the last time I was joking with Steve Hoff and maybe Dick LeBeau in 1959 or something like that. Maybe we'll call Coach LeBeau and see if he did that. He may have. I don't know. You're seeing more and more of that with this NFL, you know, that it's valuable to not just know one position but be able to play multiple positions? I think some of it's kind of how the game's been trending. You know, we, whether you want to call it position list, is a lot of getting a lot of hybrid players, the way that they're growing up playing the game where guys do play multiple spots, uh, more seven-on-seven -seven leagues, the way that people practice. Um, so I think it naturally, you know, guys are – like they didn't get, you know, 10 years old, they just got put at running back and that's all they ever played. Sitting in the eye back and that's all they ever did. So they never really worked on route running or anything like that, vice versa on the defensive side. I think you get a lot of guys that traditional safeties, now people are, you know, don't mean match up zones or they're coming down there, they, they do have man coverage skills. Again, those are things they've worked on more and more depending on what program they came from. So I think all that factors into it. But again, it's like what's old is new again, right? That's how the game used to be played, and here we are in 2022, and you're seeing a lot of those trends again. I know you've got a lot to focus on, but if Georgia Florida week and you have some Gators and Bulldogs on your team, do you expect, I don't know, anything going on, or do you hear um, about it at all, or do anything about it? No, unless <laughs> Tennessee's playing, now they're, they're good, and I'll hear from CP, but the rest of those guys, I'm sure they do. But uh, like I said, we got the people back on the Tennessee bandwagon uh, singing Rocky Top and whatever those overalls are. but. Uh, I'm sure at some point we'll hear it. How close is CP? Oh, I 
yesterday. I said I didn't, I didn't post my workout yesterday. I didn't start posting my workouts. <laughs> no, I, we're happy. I, I imagine he's pretty close, and, you know, we can't, he can't definitely come back till next week. Hope to get him back sooner or later. I'll be excited when he's back. I'll start posting my workout videos. <laughs> Mike. 